Antigone is, um, is dominated, obviously, by this standoff between Creon and Antigone, or at least the, the first two-thirds are until Antigone dies. And the, that standoff is, is portrayed in, 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 a very, in a very stark way by Sophocles, as a result of which it's a play which, is, which has been endlessly discussed. It, it's a wonderful play to, to argue about because it, it sort of forces you to take sides. Um, it, it, it sets up two people against each other. Now, how should one think about it? Well, um, you can think about it as a clash of principles, if you like. What principles? Well, you could um, say, firstly, you have state versus individual. So you have Creon, who um, feels that what he has to do is um, he has to run a city. Uh, he, he feels that running a city isn't an easy thing to do. He does it for the common good, he believes. And for the common good, it is entirely appropriate that this traitor, uh, Polynices, shouldn't be buried. Uh, versus the individual Antigone, who um, kind of stands up against the, the might of the state uh, in her belief that uh, her brother should be should be buried. Or another version of um, that, you could s set it up a state versus family. So we have again Creon the state. We have Antigone standing up for uh, what she as a family member needs to do. She needs to to bury her her brother. Uh, you can also think about um, Antigone as a representative of religious values because burying is something that, that, that the gods require. So, in, in, so you, you can use the play to think about big principles and the play has indeed over the years been, been used to, to, to think about those big principles and I'm sure Sophocles wanted us to do that. Now the interesting thing is that even though Antigone and Creon embody principles and you can have a philosophical debate if you like about it, they are not very good representatives of these principles. So starting with, with Creon, he stands for a city, he stands for uh, the state in, in, in modern terms, uh, but, but, he, but he is in some respects not a perfect ruler. Some people have doubts about him already in the first speech when he sounds rather heavy handed in the way he talks about people having to obey and, um, and having to do what the ruler says. He's certainly, even if you, if you go along with him in the first speech, he certainly becomes a problematic character later on when um, the guard comes on and reports that the body has been, has been provisionally buried and Creon, uh, understandably angry, less understandably lets his anger kind of loose on the, on, the, on the poor guard who really is only the messenger. And uh, equally with Tiresias, he, he um, uh, doesn't, doesn't behave as we would like him to. Uh, so he's imperfect as, as, a, as a ruler. And equally, uh, Antigone isn't um, uh, a perfect representative of the family, as I, as I called her earlier. Uh, she gives a very famous speech, which has been endlessly discussed, uh, uh, in which she says that what she did for her brother, uh, she would never do for um, her, her, her husband, for instance. Um, she also is imperfect uh, in so far as in the very first um, scene of the play she, in which she is in dialogue with his meanie, she, she rebuffs the, the clearly well-meaning and highly sympathetic is meanie who tries to, try, tries to sort of be on her side and, 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 uh, and soften her position a bit. And she just gets rebuffed as basically being sort of in Creon's, uh, in Cre not in Creon's pay, but on, on, on Creon's side. Uh, so, all of which is to say, we, we have a play that both encourages us, encourages us to, to, to read it as principle A versus principle B and character A versus character B. And so when we ask ourselves, so why do things go wrong? We can either return an answer which says, well, these are opposed principles, or we can return an answer saying, well, if only these characters had behaved a bit better. And, and both are legitimate uh, well, both are elements of a legitimate interpretation, and I, I think a complete interpretation has to, has to see both. One difficult question in all of this, if one tries to look at the play through the lens of 5th century spectators, 5th century BC spectators, is the question of the rights and wrongs of banning burial in the first instance. And it would seem that Sophocles has structured the play in or that particular issue in such a way that it isn't entirely clear-cut. Uh, we, we have reasonably good evidence for 
thinking that it is indeed not usual to, to bury a traitor. So in that sense, uh, Creon, if you like, is right, but he doesn't want a traitor buried. But it seems much less clear that it is right then to aggressively not bury the traitor. So, so uh, Creon wants, him, wants the body exposed to, to the elements and, and uh, that indeed we learn from Tiresias later in the play it is disapproved of by the gods. So back to the fifth century, uh, we, we have uh, one or two examples of enemies of Athens uh, being buried by their family elsewhere. Uh, so it, it would seem that he's right in not having the body, in not wanting the body buried, but he's wrong in, in not just letting it be, as it were. And the play doesn't open that avenue. The play doesn't open the avenue of, of why don't you let Antigone take the body abroad. This just doesn't work. So the clever thing Sophocles does is he puts at the heart of the play a problem which doesn't automatically tell us what is right and what is wrong. And, and hence he can then build that, that very ethically, very complicated play around uh, what is an inherently ambiguous um, moral question.